When the Game Boy Color came out back in 1998, it dominated the handheld gaming market with its small size, its small price tag, and its big, big library of games. Many of which have since been recognized as being some of the best games you can play. But would you still choose to play them on the original Game Boy Color now that we're in the age of affordable handheld emulators and of course the Nintendo Switch? Let's take a closer look at this thing, starting with... So the Game Boy Color originally came out in six different color options, and they were Kiwi, Berry, Grape, Teal, Dandelion, and my personal favorite, of course, is Atomic Purple. And let's talk about the build quality for a minute, um, because the, the exterior is basically all plastic, and this... I mean, it doesn't feel cheap, but it doesn't feel expensive either, right? And you can see it on some of Nintendo's newer consoles, like the Switch Lite that I have over here. It seems like they really set the standard a long time ago with this and with even earlier models of the Game Boy. All plastic, really good buttons. I mean, if I compare the way that this D-pad on the Game Boy Color works compared to something like this Anbernic RG35XX, <laughs> I mean, the Ambernix D-pad just feels like garbage in comparison to this 1998 Game Boy Color. So they really, they got it right a long time ago and I'm honestly surprised at how some of these emulation devices, even today, can't get a D-pad right. The power switch is delightfully tactile. You can hear that familiar startup sound. There's a red power indicator which glows bright when your batteries are new and it's not so bright when it's time to change them. We have this vertical form factor, and as far as I know, this was the last of its kind in the Nintendo handheld world. Sega Game Gear came out eight years before this and actually was going the horizontal route already, but uh, after this Game Boy Color, the Game Boy Advance came out a few years later and that went horizontal. And I think apart from the clamshells, pretty much everything's been horizontal since then. Yeah, I mean like the switch is horizontal, right? So what I mean by vertical form factor, of course, is you've got the screen above the buttons like this. While it isn't always the most comfortable to hold, it is, in my opinion, always the most nostalgic to behold. <laughs> Got it! The screen's aspect ratio is 10 by 9, which is quite unusual, and it might seem a little bit weird in today's modern world of... <laughs> Screens just getting wider and wider and wider every day. But bear in mind that the games were actually built with this aspect ratio in mind. So, so the gameplay mechanics took this into consideration. If you think about the platform games that you might play on one of these devices, you wouldn't necessarily want to see everything that's coming up ahead of you. It actually ruins some of the fun and takes out some of the element of surprise. The screen resolution is 160 by 144, which is absolutely nothing by today's standards. But just like with the aspect ratio, you have to remember a lot of the games were actually designed around this limitation, right? So you'll see a lot of great pixel art has actually come about because of the fact that they had such a low pixel count. It really spawned a whole art form in its own way. They actually added Mario's moustache as a way to distinguish facial features on such a low pixel count. They didn't, they didn't have enough space to actually draw an individual nose and mouth in there, so they just went with this big moustache across his face. And I think it worked out pretty well, actually. Pretty iconic now. The volume wheel is analog, and you actually just turn it up and down. And I really love this. It's, I think the technical term is a potentiometer dial, and it really gives you precise control over the volume level, really. Back when these were new, you wouldn't have thought anything about that, but today, everything is basically the same. It's either a volume rocker or two buttons, a plus and minus button, or, or the volume rocker, which is essentially the same thing. And for various reasons, that's, I don't know, it's just not as good in my, in my view. It's not as precise as the wheel, um, it's not as much fun as the wheel, 
yeah, please bring back the volume wheel, Nintendo. Then you have this EXT port, and you could either use it for connecting to another Game Boy and playing two-player games through the Game Link cable, or you could use it to connect to some accessories like the Game Boy printer or one of those light contraption things that would help you see what you were playing in the dark. Personally, I have never used this port. There's also this infrared little port on the top, which was introduced with the Game Boy Color, as far as I'm aware, and it was for playing multiplayer games, just like this, this wired option was. Unfortunately, only a handful of games actually supported it, and it never really caught on beyond those. Games are physical cartridges, and although you can't buy them new anymore, the upside is you can actually at least still own them. Unlike the digital versions of these games that you could play on the Nintendo Switch, since they shut down that side of the eShop, you, you can't play Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games on the Switch without a subscription to Nintendo Online, which, although that's quite cheap, it still kind of sucks. It just rubs me the wrong way, you know? Having to pay a subscription just to play a really old game when uh, you may actually own it on a hundred other platforms by now. Yeah, it's annoying. Oh, and the other thing is the library of Game Boy games that you can actually play on the Nintendo Switch right now. There's only 21 games and that, that includes Game Boy Color and original Game Boy games. So yeah, I mean, it's just, the Switch isn't the best place to be playing these types of games. And also remember that the games are built specifically for this platform. And because of that, you're gonna have a good user experience. Unlike when you're porting something to a different platform, there's a little bit of compromise a lot of the time. So uh, for instance, if you take a look at how this NES version of Super Mario Bros runs on this Adminic device versus how Super Mario Bros Deluxe runs on the Game Boy Color, you can see it's built with a small screen in mind, it's zoomed in, it's just a better gameplay experience. And speaking of games, here are some Game Boy Color games that come highly recommended. One last thing I'll say about the games themselves is that I really feel as though scarcity is a positive thing. What do I mean by that? Okay, so I've had this Ambernic RG35XX for a little while and this comes with thousands of games preloaded and I must say it's actually too much because when I picked up the Game Boy Color again and loaded up the single cartridge that I had at the time and started playing it, I quickly realized that something that I feel like we've lost in more recent decades or in more recent years is an actual sense of connection to the game itself. When you have too many games available at your fingertips, it's far too easy to just, just give up on something and jump straight into something else. And what you're left with is a very superficial experience of lots of different games rather than actually getting to experience any individual game on a deep level as it was intended to be played. In fact I also noticed the same thing when streaming became the de facto way to consume music. Speaking for myself at least I don't really spend as much time with any single album as I would have in the past and and that, that kind of sucks. Ironically it's something I really like about the fact that <laughs> these second-hand games are overpriced and you know low-tech one game on a cartridge yeah I think I miss that and I'm gonna chase that feeling let's talk about some drawbacks 
And the first and most obvious one is the fact that this device has no backlight, which makes it very hard to play if you don't have really good light source shining on the screen. Look at the difference when the light is shining on it versus when it isn't. That's something you gotta get used to. It's kind of the opposite problem that you have with modern devices where if you take them out in the sun, they have to be super bright for you to be able to see what's going on. Kind of strange how that worked out, but it can actually look pretty good at times. There's no Bluetooth, so you're not gonna be able to use wireless headphones. Instead, you have this audio jack. So yeah, you have to use wired headphones. The quality of the internal speaker is not great. It's nowhere near as good as something like this RG35XX or the Switch Lite or the Steam Deck or even my phone. It's a bit tinny, but yeah, it's not really an issue for me. The batteries are double A's, so they're not rechargeable, which is kind of a double-edged sword. So on the plus side, it means that even though these devices are really old, you're not gonna have a problem with a dead battery that needs to be replaced and it's difficult to find. It's just basic double A's. So that's great and really easy to deal with. There is a DC port in the bottom here, but as far as I know, it's just to use as an alternate power source. So there isn't really a way to recharge your batteries unless you want to mod your Game Boy, which is something I'll talk about for a little bit, because if you have the skills and the determination or just the willingness to learn, you can basically find a way around any of these drawbacks, including the problem where there's no backlight on the screen. There are backlit LCD screens. Now they even have AMOLED screens, which I think look amazing. If you have enough time and money, you could basically build yourself a luxury one-of-a-kind device mine is stock right now but if i do upgrade i think it'll definitely be the oled screen yeah i might be doing that one of these days actually so should you buy one of these things today well i think that depends it depends on why you want it if like me you're really feeling nostalgic for the original hardware itself then I would say absolutely yes. It's still really fun to play. It has some drawbacks. You can mod your way around those things, which I have yet to do, but plan to do. Otherwise, if it's just about the games themselves, then there are lots of different ways to do that without actually buying the Game Boy Color. I've already shown you, you can get one of these emulation devices. You could play on the Nintendo Switch. Personally, I wouldn't recommend that option. Alternatively, there is the Game Boy Advance and the Game Boy Advance SP. Now that's an interesting option because they actually play every Game Boy Color game, plus they play Game Boy Advance games as well. So that's a compelling option, especially considering that they aren't priced all that differently to a Game Boy Color on the second-hand market. So, certainly worth considering one of those. And that about sums it up. So, I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a like. Consider subscribing if you'd like to see more of this type of content. And I'll see you guys soon.